What's up guys? This is a pretty simple function to be able to graph, but a lot of times when I ask students to graph this function, they look at me with a blank stare. It's like they completely forgot how to graph the squared function, what it looks like, and then also how to create it on their own. Like I think we get pretty well, pretty good with like doing linear equations, and then once we get to the square root function, people are like, I just don't remember what this graph looks like, and I don't know how to create it using a table of values. And part of the reason I think that is the case because students just don't know which values to go ahead and choose. So to be able to help you with graphing this, to understand the characteristics so we never forget it and we can always graph it on our own, I think it's important for us to understand what exactly the square root function is representing so therefore we can pick the right values to go ahead and create a table to therefore then go ahead and graph. Okay, so what I want you to understand is when I take the square root of a number and I get a value a, what that represents is a times a, right? So multiplying by itself is going to give you that value x, all right? And think about it hypothetically, like if I had the square root of nine, that's equal to three. Why? Because three times three is equal to nine, okay? So it's very important to how to understand the square root function. The next thing that's really important to understand is that my x values, when I'm taking the square root or any even root, that's always going to be a positive. And again, you can see like that makes sense because if I'm multiplying something by itself, it's always going to be positive, right? Because again, it can't be one negative and one positive, right? They either have to be both positive or both negative. Well, a negative times a negative is positive and a positive times a positive is going to also be positive. So how can we use this information now to create a table of values? Well, remember when we create table of values with linear equations, we usually we picked like, you know, zero, negative one, negative two, and you know, zero, one, and two, right? We did a positive as well as negative. Well, now we can just focus on the positive result, at least for this initial equation. We'll get to like the more difficult examples later. But for this example, we know like, all right, it has to be a positive, I have to choose positive values to plug into the square root function. Let's go and start with a zero and a one because that seems like the most easiest to go ahead and start with. Okay, so remember when we have a table of values and I pick values for you know x, what I'm gonna do is those are gonna be values that we're gonna plug into our function. So here I have x is equal to zero. I'm gonna plug zero in for x. So again, if you think about this, we have you know square root of zero. Well, that's just going to be equal to a zero, right? Ah, so therefore we can say y is now going to equal to zero. So that's actually something that is actually going to be equal to greater than or actually equal to zero. So hopefully you caught me or keep me honest on there. If you already posted on the comments that I made a mistake, then here we go, I fixed it. I always appreciate you keeping me honest in here, but yeah, x can actually equal to zero as well because you could have a times a is act, or you could have a also being a zero. So zero times zero is equal to zero. Now what I can do is let's go ahead and plot that point on a coordinate grid. Okay, so now I have the coordinate point zero, zero, and it's like, all right, that's not very exciting. So let's go to the next point. How about one? Let's plug one into there, the square root of one. What, what number multiplied by itself gives you one? Well, that's just gonna equal one, right? So square root of one is just equal to one. So therefore, when I go ahead and plot this here, I get a point here. Now this looks very similar to the identity function, right? Or a linear equation. And that's where a lot of students will get mixed up because they're like, I don't know what this graph looks like. Does it go up, does it go down? Like, I know it doesn't go to the left, right? Why am I doing that? Why is that a Y? I'm crazy. Um, this is the X, right? I know I can't go to the left. I know X cannot be negative, right? It has to be positive. But where does this graph go? So here's a mistake that a lot of students will do. They'll go ahead and start with the square root of two. And they'll say, oh, the square root of two, like that makes sense, right? Well, like, why don't I go ahead and do that problem next? Well, the problem is, if I don't know what the square root of two is, right? I can't simplify the square root of two. Two is not a square number. I can't take the square root of two and, and get an integer, right? It's gonna be an irrational number. So therefore I'm gonna need a calculator. And a lot of times my teacher or myself would say, ah, no calculator. So then how are you gonna graph the square root of two? Like you could approximate it, but if you have chicken scratch handwriting and can't not really graph very well, like your approximation is not gonna look very good on a graph. Like I wanna deal with integers. So what I wanna look for is a square number. So what's the next square number that's gonna come up? Zero, one, two, three, four, right? And why is four a square number? Because square root of four is two, right? Because two times two is equal to four, right? It follows its definition. Square root of four is equal to two because two times two is equal to four. So I'm not gonna use two, don't do that. You wanna pick your square numbers. And that's what's important here that I want you to understand about this equation because even if we have transformations like plus and minus and multiplying, what you wanna do is you wanna pick values for your table that's gonna make your radicand, what's under the square root, always be an even number. So sometimes that takes a little bit of what we call mental gymnastics to do that. It's not sometimes as easy as this problem that I'm describing, but what you wanna do is make sure when you're plugging in values for your table of values, that whatever's under your square root, you can take the square root of it. So try to make sure that they are going to be square numbers. I'm actually gonna put this X, that's kind of confusing. I'm just gonna put a line through it. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, what about four, okay? So I have one, two, three, four, and we know that the square root of four, that is just gonna equal a two. So one, two, and voila, okay? Now, again, you could definitely go to the next one, which would be the next square number, which is nine, is going to be three. So if I was plotting this, and you know, just to kind of give you a heads up, if you did have some transformations, I would try to get under my radical, you know, any one of these three points. And technically, at least once you have two points, as long as you understand what the shape is of this curve, then you can go and correct it. I think it's always important to have this end point here because that's gonna be kind of like the start or the end, however you think about it. And then at least you're gonna to want to have one other point because you wanna know, is it going up? Sometimes we'll have transformations that are going down or if we're going to the left, like there can be a lot of things going on. But as long as you have two points, you can recognize that, oh, what this graph does is it kind of goes faster increasing and then it tapers down and stuff like that. So that is exactly what this graph looks like. Now that you kind of see it and recognize it, when we apply transformations, hopefully you can see that, oh yeah, I know some coordinate points. I know how to quickly find them if I need to, and then I can apply my transformations as needed. So in the next video, that's exactly what I want to deal with is how to identify the transformations to transform this graph as well as how to find the domain and the range.